Well, good evening, everybody. Fantastic to see you here. Good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are on the planet. It's wonderful to have you along for tonight's first of two special sessions that we're going to be running for everybody who registered for the conference. Uh, today's session is the AI revolution, how you can take advantage of it in your trading and three AI stocks to watch. I've actually, because I'm a nice guy, I'm actually going to put up six uh, that I think are worth looking at on the ASX and reference a couple. Uh, for those of you who trade share CFDs, I'm going to reference a couple for the US. I've deliberately chosen stocks that are in the ASX 200 um, for your consideration. Now, just before we kick off, I just want to make sure that you can hear or see me. <laughs> yes, many, many familiar faces. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, it is really Mike Smith, not a chat GPT AI bot hosting tonight. Uh, they're not quite got all of the. Uh, um, you'll see the screen, but not me. Um, uh, Peter, uh, you'll all be sent to recording. Um, but yes, go for your life. Hi, Brian. Great to see you here. Good day, George. Uh, Johnny, Sonia, John. Ed, good to see you here. Uh, and all who have made it tonight. Good day, Robin. And Simon, good day. Importantly, if you've got questions that you want to ask, I'll do my best to answer them on the session. And of course, uh, your participation in this, in doing so, in asking questions, helps not just yourself, but also everybody on the session. That makes it a lot more fun for me. So feel free to ask questions at any time. I've got a couple of polls that I'm going to run throughout the course of the session as well. So the way we're going to do, I'm going to talk a little bit about AI and what it is and how it works and where it's at and all that sort of stuff, and then drill down on my top six uh, on the ASX to, um, so you can go away and have a look at them at your leisure. Right, okay, let's uh, put up this important message just to make sure that you're all, um, g'day John, uh, that you all sort of understand what this is all about. Hi Shane, g'day uh, to everybody I haven't said hello to, but who's put in the, in the questions box? Uh, George, hi. Can, non can a non-Aussie trade through gold markets? Yes, you can. Uh, George, hi, Rosalind. Good day, Michael. I hope your internet hangs on in there. <laughs> MSI, Mike Smith, intelligence like it, Roger. Okay, so it is for educational purposes only. Do it on due diligence. I can make the decision for you as to whether shares or share CFDs are right for you and your investing style. You want to make that own decision for yourself. And of course, if you do so, make sure you follow trading plans and manage risk on every trading action that is on entry and as if not more important on exit so that little thing being said um let's just some of you so i've got my gold markets hat on uh, most of you were at the conference on with my trader iq hat on as well uh, this is a trader iq model uh and i reference this before so we all see the same markets now what we're talking about today is is looking at some slightly different markets or looking at markets in a different way and our response is individual to that we interpret markets it's miq uh, develop and apply systems and of course to make some decisions and take action and we develop as we go through our trading journey uh, for a lifetime hopefully of successful trading so that's the basic model uh, the good news is that this is all in your control you've got all the choices to make and so really what we're doing today is a little bit of a look at markets, but more important, I think there's some, possibly some lessons uh, that I might cover in another session, uh, maybe one of the inner circle sessions, which we're in every Wednesday night, about maybe using a system for when you come across a new market trend, which sort of fits into this interpretation side of things, and then how do you action that? What do you do? What do you put in place to take full advantage of a new market trend? So you're at the leader uh, or the, the head of the queue rather than the follower. And at the back of the queue, man, that's where we all want to be. So um, what's artificial intelligence? So it's, it's a concept that's been around since the 1950s, to be honest. Um, and it, it, it was defined as a machine's ability to perform a task that would have otherwise previously required human intelligence, what that is, whatever that is. Um, intelligence has been described as the ability to adapt, solve problems, plan, improvise new situations, and learn new things. And we often talk, and, and in fact, Trade IQ is based on three intelligences, as we've already said. And so it's that model 
which is really uh, that model of intelligence, which really is the foundation of that and in terms of any trading development. <laughs> uh, right, OK, I mean, as AI systems have become more sophisticated at the moment, and we'll talk about this in more detail, we've got simple voice recognitions, chat box, monitoring, uh, search and diagnostic tools or so-called so artificial narrow intelligence. Uh, but even that's exploding beyond uh, beyond what was thought was possible even a couple of years ago. Uh, and so a massive increase in functionality is expected in the coming years that's, that theoretically is exponential in growth. And this may be this may be what makes artificial intelligence different to a, different to a fad. And by a fad, I mean, we all remember because um, uh, we took advantage of it, of course, uh, those of you who were on my regular sessions. Uh, you all remember the lithium, uh, the lithium joyride we all had for some time there. And uh, maybe starting again, we, uh, I put out uh, a couple of weeks ago that uh, lithium prices were starting to curl upwards a little bit. So it might be um, here for part two, but m most fads have a, have a, a finite life um, and they'll get over uh, overexposed in terms of traders, stroke investors, and then they'll sort of find their own groove after that and then be subject to everything else that's going on uh, in markets. Um, the issue with, um, let's ask it, let's set a poll up, of course. Uh, I'm just going to run one now, just see how you're feeling about AI generally. Because there's a lot of um, stuff going on around, lots of, um, lots of, oh my God, it's the end of the human race as we know it, sort of nonsense. Um, but you could be in one of one two places. It could excite you, and the, the opportunities as a trader or investor could make you think, yeah, that's great. Or you could be really upset, really upset, and really perturbed about where this might eventually lead. I should have, I should have made it so you can tick on both if you want to, because it may be a uh, an excitement or a and uh, thank you very much for all those who participated that's awesome um so um yeah and there's a couple of uh, uh that's over half of you uh participating that's marvelous both for you says ross uh, will i take away a trading edge says mick it's an interesting one mick and it all goes back to what you term or what you define a trading edge generally speaking uh, for those of you who are less familiar with the term a trading edge really is uh, a description that suggests that you have some advantage over other market participants. I, I would suggest that that um, if you have a trading plan and journal and measure your trading performance, you've got an edge over most of the market participants anyway. But in terms of finding technical solutions to or, or, or technical um, setups and, 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 and systems that you can use, then maybe or maybe not. Um, it depends how innovative you are. Lots of people saying both. Lots of people saying both. Um, yep, yeah, Ross, Mick, uh, David, John, Robin. Yeah, and, and I think I, I think there's bound to be. I'm just going to close this poll down. Thank you. Over two thirty of you voted. That's wonderful. Um, so th the reality is that most algori algorithm, most of these AIs are algorithm based on the opinion and supervision of human experts. But to some degree, the idea is replacing our hands with the need for direct human involvement to solve problems. Now, of course, as I said, lots of fear mongering going on about this. Uh, and it sounds very samey to all the fear mongering that was going on when robots were first, um, I'm sure my age now, when, when robots sort of took the next leap up uh, and people were worried about, oh my God, they're gonna take over making cars and that's it. And we're going to get swathes of people uh, in unemployed. But what tends to happen is as technology develops, then we find new ways to occupy ourselves as humans. There is one thing here with the AI stuff, um, which is which is possibly a concern. I'll, I'll just briefly touch on that and, and put it into context. Total spending on AI systems is expected to reach 97.9 billion in 2023 which is a already a staggering growth from only four years ago 
Um, so an annualized growth rate of, uh, uh, of around, oh, just to feed you back, 85% of you uh, think it's exciting, 15% of you are rather perturbed about it all. And many of you who um, put in the um, put in the questions box that you were a bit perturbed about both. PwC, the accountancy firm who are global, but obviously have a big, um, a, a big input in Australia suggests that uh, AI could contribute to 15.7 trillion to the global economy in 2030. So that's not spending, that's on what it contributes back into the economy, which is more than the current uh, output of China and India combined. Good day, Neil. So what this means is that this isn't going away. And this is the difference between this and a FAD. Um, and so that's really uh, what, what it's all about. Now, in terms of just touching base with what I, I, AI can do now, um, so common applications for it already are in healthcare. Um, there's diagnostic tools, personalized treatment plans, that sort of stuff. In finance, it's used to detect fraud, making investments, decisions, and of course, analyze financial data, and in trading to a large degree as well. Retail, it's all used to personalize custom customer experience, optimize the supply chain side of things, and there's one Australian company which does that very well. Um, agriculture, autumn, I'm not going to read this through. You, you can have a look at the list yourself, but right the way through just about every sector, stroke, subsector, AI is already in use. So this isn't, and as I said, this has exploded in the last five years uh, and, and is just accelerating in, in, in almost month on month. You only have to look at the headlines. I looked at CNBC and, and just kept a record over the last couple of weeks or so, three weeks. Um, and there was references to AI in the headlines at least every other day, at least. Uh, and, and more of that. Military is not mentioned, of course, military as well. Um, but just about every sphere of our lives already is influenced to some degree by AI. I mean, you all pick up a phone and you say, hey, Siri. I'll switch the sound off. So it's responded to me anyway. That's AI. So the majority of what we already do, in fact, all of what we already do uh, and have, uh, and most of the developments are in this so-called artificial narrow intelligence or a and i okay what the developments are going to be is software refinement hardware refinement development of new and more sophisticated ways in which we use what we're doing now uh, and that's often known as weak ai okay by some quarters artificial general intelligence which is you which is sometimes termed strong ai is still a way off we're not there yet researchers haven't been able to achieve strong AI so far because they would have to find methods to make machines in some way, shape or form conscious, uh, programming a full cognitive ability set that we have. Uh, now, it's not to say that people aren't investing in this. Microsoft invested really heavily in general AI recently. But I found an example which is a really good, a good one in terms of where we are now with strong AI. So Tiana 2 is a supercomputer that, that China's National University uh, developed. So there were, these are terms I had to come to terms with, <laughs> uh, and certainly not part of my general uh, standard language, but um, calculations per second or CPS. Um, this compute, this supercomputer um, is 33.86 and that's quadrillions of CPS. Uh, now that sounds like, ma that sounds massive. Uh, but to put it into context, um, the rather than petroflops, the human brain is estimated to be capable of one extra flop, ex extra flop, sorry, which is a billion CPS. So we are nowhere near at this stage what it would require to process um, anything that's meaningful uh for right now but there is a uh, obviously this is something that over the next decades we should uh get oh we're paused sorry um obviously this is something over the next decades that uh that we should we should get to uh, but really we're looking at sort of the 20 30 years time 
um, it's expected that we may start to make some progress on ANI, sorry, on AGI. Okay, sorry, must have been having a bad day when I did this. There we go. AGI, there we go. So, and if we look at the, the one that people are really scared of, it's the artificial superintelligence, okay? Um, that's really still in the realms of science fiction. Um, and what this means in essence is that AI exceeds human capabilities and we're, we're moving down the Terminator route. And um, for those of you who are fans of that particular uh, series of movies starring, the, uh, starring Arnie, so that's really where we are now. So what we've done so far is we've talked about what it is, what the investment is likely to be and what the output is likely to be, but that we are really focused on this narrow intelligence uh, in terms of uh, applications of AI and are likely to be so for the coming decades. So what's likely to be next? Well, as I've already said, uh, the majority of developments that are likely in the next few years are likely to be uh, software refinement uh, and development of new and more sophisticated application of narrow AI. Certainly chat GPT has accelerated the interest as far as it being seen as very innovative. If that was, what well, I said, so analogy, if, if, if chat um, GPT were a band, uh, they'd be number one at the moment. They're, they're really, uh, it's really sort of opened people's eyes and interest. Uh, FYI, the good fire of AI quits Google and warns of danger. Yeah, I saw that as well. Uh, right, okay, um, just wanna get rid of that little G that's in the middle of the screen. So if we look at what is, um, where it's at there are really three uh three parts to this narrow ai which is going to be the focus of development so so-called artificial general easy artificial intelligence the series the uh the um, alexas that sort of thing it's the ability of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior so you give it a you give it a a a, a question Oh, Google search. Okay, it's another really basic um, uh, AI function, any search function. Or um, my partner's a diabetic, so she wears she wears a device which monitors what blood sugar is at any given time and alters insulin dosage um, through a pump based on that. So there's lots of applications that are already using this. Um, so that's artificial intelligence. Machine learning is well underway in terms of its uh, in terms of its applications uh, that allow systems to start to learn and improve from experience. And again, we're sort of seeing this in things like voice recognition, for a, for a prime example. And then deep learning um, is when you have multi layers of uh, of machine learning. Um, machine learning software that, that starts to use more complex algorithms uh, and is, multi, yeah, as is multi-layered and therefore um, you're training the model as you go. So not only learning at a basic level that if this happens, you do what, if X happens, you do Y, but if A, B and C happens, you do A1, A2 and Z3. So that is where it's going. Now, in terms of applications for this, just to help a little bit. So machine learning is, is being already being used or being investigated in terms of sales forecasting for different products, fraud analysis in banking. Uh, so, so many of you will be on the receiving end of text messages which say we've uh, stopped your credit card, uh, we've frozen your account, whatever, whatever. Uh, please contact the bank initially. And obviously, uh, some of those are fraudulent as well. But but generally speaking, many of us all have been on the receiving end of that product recommendation. So when we uh, so as we as we have a look through the internet and that data is kept, then it's we'll see specific products, specific adverts based on what we are looking at already. That's an application of machine learning. Uh, and then stock price prediction, which we've already referenced that there is uh, AI models out there already. It's the next, so if you like, it's the next level of basic EAs. 
Yeah, uh, I, I agree. So Ed's um, uh, Ed's referenced uh, quantum con computing uh, and uh, and taking really machine learning to the next level. Uh, IBM is a leader in that, without a doubt. Go and have a look at. Uh, thanks, Ed, for your info. Go and have a look at Osprey. Three times it's more powerful than its predecessor built two years ago. That's quite staggering. So that's the acceleration. That's a great uh, example of how quickly AI is developing. Uh, once we get to deep learning, it's things like cancer detection or stroke or malignant or, or, or non-malignant tumors, tumors, music generation, music generation, image coloring, object detection. So what is this? So the the, the so I've got a, a pair of headphones that are sitting on a printer right next to me, uh, and if I was to try and program that, that's what you call deep learning. So you're not only sort of identifying uh, what sort of it's uh, some sort of electronic object, but it's got round ends and it's got something that you can speak into as well. So the processes involved in in working out what an object actually is are quite sophisticated, of course, uh, and require that multi layer. Uh, multi-layer capability to um, to then learn from. Um, that is a pair of headphones, and then so therefore this is what headphones look at. So that's where this is where it's all going now. Um, so what does all this mean? Reinvesting. So actually, if you don't mind, just just so I've got a little because I want to um, do it. I want to make sure that we're focusing on what you guys do want. Um, I, I just just in terms of what you're trading now, some of you will be trading ASX shares, some of you will be trading share CFDs, and some would go and not would go. And it doesn't matter to me. Everybody's welcome here. But if you wouldn't mind just ticking the box, um, as I just answer a few more questions, I'm just looking through. There's a few questions coming through. How fast is it going to accelerate? Well, Ed's given a great example already. Uh, something that's three times more powerful uh, is being built in two years. So just multiply that by uh, it, it, the growth is undoubtedly exponential. It's not it's not linear. We're not moving one step in a month and two steps in two months and three steps in three months. Um, we are moving um, multiple uh, multiple steps which seem to be ever increasing. And of course, the more money's put into this, the better the software, the better the hardware, the more creative in terms of how we can apply this, then the more, it's almost like a, a, um, you feed the beast and it's just gonna keep multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. Um, just trading indices, that's fine. Um, that's all good. And thanks very much for your participation. Oh, I, I, absolutely. Wayne makes a great point. Who knows what will be here tomorrow? And we can only predict the the, um, uh, the state of that. Would you like me to have a quick look at the markets? Thank you very much for your participation. We'll have a quick look at what FX and indices markets are doing uh, before we finish, if, if, if that works. So just type in yes if you'd like me to do that for five minutes or so. And just type that in the questions box. I'll just have a quick look. We'll just check in on... Um, and, and obviously the growth predictions uh, that we gave earlier depend on many factors, not least the state of economy, the acceleration of such, such technologies. Look how the pandemic has accelerated um, many tech, uh, many tech applications, simply because there was a human need to do so. Um, so, and um, because everybody was sat at home twiddling thumbs, unless you lived in WA, of course, we just wouldn't let anybody in. So if we look, if we try and sort of, um, bring it all down into what's working what's not it would appear that companies that may benefit will be leaders in the software that powers ai application software so we've got this basic software how do we then uh, create a, a bit of software that uses that underlying um underlying ai programming if you like and puts it into a, a particular context uh, and then obviously the hardware that enables the practical use of such or utilization of existing hardware, well, you wouldn't be surprised to see mobile phone developments uh, and innovations be be somewhat uh, that and, 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 AI, and AI be somewhat integrated, which is surprising, which makes it surprising that Apple isn't leading in this at all. Um, but maybe it's just waiting for people to develop stuff that they can subsequently use. Maybe that's why Apple aren't a leader. Um, 
And of course, the bottom line is how attractive is this to to the business markets and the consumer markets? I mean, that really is at the end of the day with any product, um, with any application, that's really the, the major driver for how successful it is or otherwise. And again, how much money is going into it ultimately. So look, you'd have to be under a rock to not realize that US big tech is already perceived as being well ahead of the game. Now, the four big players in this are Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and NVIDIA. In fact, um, Google, which was one of our charts of the week last week, have gone la la after uh, expressing to the market where, where they are with their AI, what they're doing. And Microsoft has also done very well of late too. And um, so we all know about those. And, and certainly uh, the, there's a strong, whoops, come on, Mike. There's a strong uh, a strong case for having some exposure in one of those uh, big four, if you're interested in having some AI uh, exposure, or either short or long term. Now, of course, for the long term, the, the, there are massive opportunities. For the short term, there are too, because this will go in and out uh, depending on uh, depending on what the priorities are, where the economies are as we go. So maybe there's time and there's good examples of the stocks we're going to have a look at. So what appears to be the case is that those that are less risky yet still give maximum opportunities are those that have established businesses that are using not only developing AI. So beyond the we plan to develop this going forward um so not the developmental startups for now may be a until the the landscape is clear until what works and what isn't working is clearer it may well be proven to have at least some interest in those that are already developed developed uh, or already have some establishment of development um but of course those that are uh, startups are always a very dangerous game, but but obviously it's so cheap, so and, and the returns are, are massive. But um, you pick one that's just starting to ripen, and of course that then becomes uh, major takeover targets for these big four plus the, the other big players. The ones I've cho chosen are all big players, or are, are all big players, big companies already. And as I said, we'll have a look at some charts. So. Um, we get to it, we get to my top six ASX stocks. Now, um, as I've already said, I think that Australia is surprisingly well placed. Um, the, a lot of some of the companies that I'm gonna talk about have exposure globally, uh, and so we're doing okay. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just briefly go through these, we'll have, we'll have a look at a chart after each is, is the plan. So. Uh, App Unlimited or APX is a global leader in providing uh, um, machine learning and, and AI it's in 130 countries. And it's used to train machine learning models, which is really slick in terms of this is that um, software that develops AI models. This is that software that develop, takes AI and machine learning, which is, a, if, if you like, a subsidiary of AI to the next level. So. Uh, so here's APX. So um, if we look at the, uh, if you see something like this in a chart, go and have a look at, at, at go and have a look at market index. Find out what on earth happened on that date. So this would be bonkers not to do, being uh, the technical term. Um, and we can see here that uh, there was a cost reduction program, strategy refresh. So this is essentially realigning the company based on, on on what they think is going to happen. So this resulted in this drop. There was an investor presentation here, uh, and we're seeing some recovery. I really like this. At this level, at this price level, I think it offers value in terms of where the company is. It is uh, really quite healthy in that space. Three dollars is a is a key target on this, so that would be a substantial return. So APX is one that. So that's the first one to have a look at. The next one is uh, Next DC Limited, um, which is again, an Australian based company um, that uses AI for automating process, uh, automating process in, uh, in terms of network management security, some of the cyber security stuff uh, NXT are looking at. 
again, uh, I think I've got the chart ready. Uh, there's NXT. Um, nice day today, although somewhat unusual. Uh, but you can see there that was a big earnings pop. Uh, if we look at a weekly chart, you can see that this is now positioning itself for a move back up towards $14. Uh, at medium term, that's where I would suggest technically. Uh, it's in an uptrend. We've had a retracement. You can see here, if we just look at the 200 MA, it's just popped up a little bit. Let's just change this to a 50. Have a look and see where this sits. Uh, there we go. So there's the 50 now pointing significantly up. Uh, and so I would suggest that anything over 1228 suggests a little bit of investor interest in this again, um, beyond just a recovery from where it landed uh, in November. So, so plenty of upside in this. Again, uh, I would say that in the short term for traders, you could probably got about 13% there once it breaches 1230. Uh, but long term, uh, anything over this $14 and it could fly wherever it flies to. Uh, so very popular with the market in terms of uh, in terms of how it's doing. Also doing Forex, OK, that's cool, John. Uh, next one is WiseTech. Now, WiseTech were uh, uh, one of my charts of the day, one of the ASX charts of the day. I'll tell you about those in a little while. Um, so in 130 companies, uh, provider of cloud-based software solutions for logistics and transportation industry. So this is one of those um, applications. So the WiseTech have essentially taken it, uh, used AI for automation. Um, really, really strong. Actually, was it yesterday, WTC, when the chart of the day or a couple of days ago? I'm sure I put them all here for convenience sake. There you go. Uh, and I would say this is a buy. This is a buy today. It's, uh, if we look at where this sits, it's at all time highs. Um, this company just gets better and better. It did have a short term pause uh, at around about 70 bucks. We had the retracement, and when it was last here, uh, down to about 65. You've got to, it, it moves around about 150 per day, uh, as a, if we look at the ATR. Uh, but you can see there, it, um, it not only, we've not only got continuation of the trend, but we've got uh, a test of the previous day's high as well, an engulfing. Uh, bullish candle. Uh, I could see this at $200 over the next 12 months. What effect do I think AI being used as a training tool in conjunction with automated training, algorithm training will have on the markets? Will the human element become obsolete eventually? Well, no, because um, it's still, it's it's a good, great question, Josh, but it's still, uh, the thinking is that, that up to 80% um, of trading is is Argo stroke high frequency trading. But fear and greed elements will still drive the markets. There's still going to be the need for um, institutions uh, to actually make decisions. Um, there's going to be decisions made on uh, decisions made on uh, on what asset classes to apply things to, what time frames. There's still going to be decisions uh, made having to be made on um on how so these are these algos eas anybody who anybody who's had to put an ea together knows that the amount of testing and retesting and retesting again is quite significant to even find something that gives a small amount of good return um so as they are still supervised and developed by humans then uh, there's always the, uh, although there is an impact. Uh, if we know that that's the case, and we can work out, with some knowledge, we can work out how good EAs are programmed. And, uh, and subsequently, we can then develop strategies around that. Uh, so that's the other, um, that's the other thing we can, we can start to check out on, but it's a great question. Uh, Josh, thank you for that. Um, zero, uh, zero again is another one that I've been smashing on about for ages that it's been undervalued. It seems to have at last. Uh, so if we pop this on a on a line chart, just for simplicity, you can see that it's breached that the uh, last time it was at this level. It was uh, mid April. 
finally breached that looking good for a move higher uh today's close is above this 73 sorry 93.77 uh medium term this is really good it's on the rebound but just again to put the, the the upside in this is quite staggering um you can see where it was uh, at the beginning of 2020 or towards the back end of 2021 it was up around 150 bucks so you could see that up 50 percent uh, over the next six months to year i'm probably slightly more conservative than that but certainly in uh i would say in in the next quarter i would, I would be very surprised not to see it up near you know, this 112 level technically and from a, a fundamental point of view it's around about 19 20 percent uh so and obviously that's it. these guys are in the business software uh, space they use their ai uh, to make suggestions uh, and insights uh, into um, whoever uses them from a personal from a personal business point of view so that's four of my top six uh alu altrium limited 80 countries um it uses ai in really the design space so electronics automotive aerospace um this is again this is one that's received a lot of coverage from a lot of people uh, a lot of the longer term um a lot of longer term guys out there like Pat profits etc like altrium as well it's been been banging on about for ages and it's really really underperformed now i think we're starting to get uh there's an undoubted market comfort with it above this 3670 level. And because of some of the sectors that it's gone in, that it's involved with, things like the automotive sector, things like the aerospace sector, the investment of those is perceived to, have, uh, to, to be uh, under a little bit of pressure just simply because uh, money has gone elsewhere. But, um, and of course, from a consumer point of view, um, less money is going to be put into design uh, of new cars um, if there is less cars being bought. And, and, and that's obviously going to be one of the impacts of a consumer discretionary item like a, a car. So, but the market seems to be saying here, we're happy where it is now. You can see that 200 DMA there uh, sitting there for all to see. I think that short term, there's an opportunity here. Uh, possibly, uh, uh, if we breach um, 37.55, I see possibly a five or a six percent move up to around about forty dollars. Long term, I think this is positioned really well, but it's going to need the economy to do slightly better for it to to start to test uh, that um, forty-one dollar high from the beginning of year, and ultimately that uh, that high from november 2021 the good thing about these stocks that have come down significantly is that there's nice landmarks for for, for trader stock investors in terms of when to get in where to get out whereas if you've got something like uh, wtc the difficulty with wtc is that it's, it's at all-time highs and obviously people get a bit twitchy uh, sometimes about that uh, and one last one is um brain chip uh really been decimated over the really, really since the start of the year but looks as though it's got some uh some significant move to run up. i felt i had to do one uh one cheapie um that's under a dollar and brain chip would be my choice in that they are well developed in this sector they're still in the space where um where they are developing significantly where they are still at a negative PE, uh, but what's happening here is is that market they, they released an investor presentation. Markets really liked uh, where the company was going, and you can see even since then, uh, I like it up here around about 62. But you can see even since then we've moved up 20 percent. Uh, the upside on this is 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 very very significant. Uh, so if you want a more speculative, but it's still a company that's doing. Um, that's doing some good things in this space. Uh, this is um, use something called neuromorphic computing, which is moving down that um, 
that line of of, of deep learning uh, and probably uh, probably certainly the leader in this country. Uh, there are other considerations. I've just put Tyco, Kogan, and Seek up there. We've all got um, Tyco payment system, Kogan, online sales, and Seek. Obviously, the job, um, uh, the jobs, uh, the job advert company. Uh, they're all using AI to some degree, but really in the applications of Sokogan, for example, using it to try and find products if, uh, that, that people would be more interested in buying. Uh, Seeker are using it to try and match jobs to uh, previous searches. And, um, so uh, that is where that is. So there's another three for you to come to consider. Uh, let's just have a look at the biggies. Um, so let's just have a look at Google. Uh, there's Google, we called it at this point here. Uh, this, and then went, went and did this. Just such a, a, a strong player. They um, they had a stock split which pushed it down below $100 for, but we can see this up to 122. Uh, I, I don't think this is going to slow down very much, but 16% to the upside potential there. Uh, and then Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft seems to love this company. Uh, massive leader, uh, stuck at around about 310 at the minute. Short term target 350, uh, long term, uh, medium term target. So uh, by the end of the year, I think this will be 400. Um, that's where I'm at with this in terms of in terms of how quickly uh, and how popular their developments have been. These guys are shoving massive amounts of cash to be leaders, and wouldn't surprised wouldn't be surprised at all if both Microsoft and Google are hunting around. Uh, and picking up companies left, right, and center. Let's just have a look at NVIDIA. Then anything in that space that seems to have an AI orientation is probably not a bad thing. There's NVIDIA on a weekly chart uh, going very, very well. Uh, and again, looks as though the upside on this is quite significant, even in the short term. Um, busted through last week, a key level at 280. Um, 300 is a nice round number for the market. You know how the market's like nice round numbers. So maybe 304 up to 330 odd. Uh, that will be a 10% return. And then of course after that, um, you're in new uh, new territory. So I think Nvidia, but it's anything that's in um, chip spaces that are that are in a position to um, produce applications from a hardware point of view, I think. Uh, I think is worth a look at. So um, that's uh, that's so the stock. As I said, I promise to I promise to have a quick whiz around the markets in a moment. Um, just I, I want you to take some actions from this. Just uh, as I said, if you want slides, pop, pop me an email. I better pop my email into chat. Uh, some of you have got it already. I'll put my go markets email in here. Now, uh, those of you who are part of IQ, which I know many of you are, then of course you can connect with me uh, that way too. Uh, so have a look at what you're doing now. Um, consider if there's merit in in either some AI exposure or getting into some AI exposure. Of course, if you are not into share CFDs at this moment, would like to learn more, make sure you rock up next week. I'm going to give you the bottom line on that, the pros, the cons, the ins, the outs, et cetera, et cetera, as I said before. Uh, make sure you plan your approach. E even if you're and I've done sessions on this before. Even if you, uh, even if you're trading from a fundamental point of view, you should have a plan uh, relating to that, um, and you, within that, decide whether any technical factors should be taken into account. Uh, I've, I've tried to sort of mirror both, uh, or a combo, a combo approach for one of a better, uh, for one of a better word in tonight's uh, session, just so you can, uh, whichever way you slice it and what's right for you, you can take uh, advantage of some of the things that we've been talking about. Um, look, it would be amiss of me uh, not to just um, go, go equities. If you want to know about go equities, then you can obviously go and check that out for yourself and see uh, if it's something that might interest you. Uh, I'm just going to ping that link as well uh, oh, I can't oh. hang on a 
the second. Let's just do this. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a look at the markets in a minute. I'm just going to quickly put this up. Uh, if you want to know about share CFDs, then then come along. I'll put the link to Go Markets in there. You can find out a bit more about Share Smart as well, which is great. It sort of scans markets for stuff uh, that might fit your particular criteria. Uh, and so, whoops. See all slides. So we have closed down the presentation somewhat uh, prematurely. Okay, so I'm um, going to give you a. Uh, the, there's 23 trades until the end of the financial year. So um, for anybody who opens an account, so if you're interested in, in looking at that, have a chat to the guys. Uh, likewise with ShareSmart. Um, also, make sure you see our AS, ASX chart of the day published on YouTube. If you want details on that? Ping me, in, ping me an email. Uh, we've got live updates. I'm going to put the link into that. So every day, um, if you can bear my much more of my northern English accent, uh, we run a session at 12:30 Melbourne time, 10:30 uh, Perth, and all the other time zones in between. Uh, we're going. We have a look at markets. We have a look at what the headlines are. We have a look at charts and see if we can pick a chart of the day for FX or shares in uh, Australia, and uh, of course. Uh, we have a quick look at the US and Europe as well. So I'm just going to put the uh, link in for that into chat as well. Put a live update so you can identify it. You're welcome to pop along to that. Nothing, we're not selling anything at that. And, and I looked at people there. The banter's great. There's usually 50 plus people there. Uh, and of course, bring your shares along, bring your share charts along as well. And we'll have a look at those for you too. Obviously, we go market share CFDs, you get ASX, US, uh, European markets available on MT5. Don't forget, next week, developing a strategy to trade US ETF CFDs. So if you are interested, that'll be a longer term approach, not short term trading approach per se. Uh, but if you are interested in that, come and have a look. You'd be very welcome. Trade safe and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now.